in the previous statement. And we're going to create the actual customer table in the database so that we can query off of it. So uh, the command is very simple create you know, space table, the word table, and name of the table. And we're always going to start off with uh, uh, open and close parenthesis. And we just spread them out and define all the uh, columns inside of it. So we have, uh, as we've uh, repeat, repeated a few times, column names are full name, city, state, and phone. So we're going to simply you know, type those. Full name again, I'm putting square bracket because the word full and the word name, they're not connected, there's a space in between. Where are we supposed to, where are we to put uh, an underscore, then I wouldn't need it. Uh, I wouldn't need the square brackets. And I'm going to define it with var varchar, variable character, because I don't know the exact length of the name. City will be you know, 25, let's increase the, or 20, um, and let's increase the uh, full name to 50. What that means is uh, if a name is 20 characters, well, SQL Server is going to store that much storage. Uh, if it's um, you know if it's ten characters, it's gonna store ten characters. For phone number, although you could do int, but uh, I prefer to do with that in a variable character. Uh, and that's something you can you know, play around and learn later later on. The query is uh, complete as is, but just to have consistency with the rest of the tables in the database, we're going to type in the name of the database and the schema, which is dot uh, you know, dbo. We can parse it. And it is, you know, it's working it's, uh, properly. It's successful, whatever. As soon as we hit execute, and we go back, it should, you know, it should, should show us the same message. If we go back to the table and hit refresh, we'll see our customer table right there. One thing I did forget, um, and that's why we're going to learn another function. We're going to delete this table or drop this table. There's a difference in in them, but let's just wipe it out completely. So if you simply put drop in front of that statement, drop table, whatever table it is. It will completely wipe it out from the database. So if you hit refresh in the table or list of tables in the database, you will see that the customer table is gone. What I was referring to is uh, a identification column. This is something you would always come across in every type of on a database. Here's a syntax. We have a value and we have an incremental value. It starts off with int value. Um, we're going to start off with, for example, um, a one, and it will increment by one. That means Every time there's a record added in that table, it will increase by one. So this is a syntax you could just copy off later on and you know learn and read about it later on from books online or whatever. And um, again, I'm just defining it that first value is one, and every incremental record in that table will be added as one. I'm also putting not null. It's saying that we have to, or this uh, this 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 row has to you know populate cannot be empty for example full name uh, there is no not null null is you know basically uh, having or giving the user the ability to um, leave that row empty so these row or these table oh, I'm sorry these columns could be empty because not null is not enforced we'll parse it we'll execute it we'll go back to table list and we'll hit refresh and we'll see our customer table uh, and it should be right there and now that we have our customer table in the database, we will run a very simple, very common, the most popular query that you will often use, select everything from customer table. But the word everything is not in, you know, defined in SQL. So we'll use asterisk, commonly known as select star from customer, select everything from customer. Because we did not insert any rows um, in the table, we simply created the uh, table. There is nothing in the table. So we'll learn another function called insert. You already learned drop. You could, you know, take a note of that. So we'll insert data or values into the table that we created. So it's in the syntax is here, and you can look it up online later on. Insert into customer table values. Again, parenthesis open and close. Inside, we'll use quotes, and I'm simply copying this stuff from my Excel sheet. And I'm going to paste it um, in the you know, inside the parenthesis. Execute. One row affected. We're now going to run the select star from customer uh, again, and it should show that row. Voila, magic. 
that's it so our first row appears and the ID is one because that's the starting value we're going to insert it again and again I'm pasting you know this next row hit execute one row affected and so you got the idea and I'm going to continue to you know paste copy paste the four rows and insert them into the table and then we're going to run the query again select start from customer now we should see all the four rows just like we we see on the right side in the excel sheet now we're going to go back to our initial query I'm going to copy and copy that paste in the bottom I'm going to comment that out and an error is thrown and we're going to run the select start from customer again and we should see all the columns so uh, I'll put the square bracket in and then we'll run our query again and we should only see John Smith that row because in our work clause we you know, restricted it but what if we want to see everything in that row in the row of John Smith again we just simply want to replace the full name with select star where full name is John Smith it should bring in the whole row this is the beauty of SQL it could be very precise and it could be very you know, general now what if I say that I want to see all the records of people where they're you know or those people that live in California or we'll simply say state equals CA look on the right side in the Excel sheet I would I should only see Jane Smith and Tony Stark because both of them you know live in California I'll hit execute and those two rows are shown rather retrieved that's the correct term those two rows are retrieved now that we're done with the insert statement we're going to uh, go create temp tables temp tables are temporary tables that are valid for a single session we're simply going to copy the code for create table an actual table I'm going to paste it you will see the only difference is we we'll have to put a number sign it's a pound sign in front of the uh, table name but we don't have to specify the database or any of that stuff and I'm gonna you know change that to customer 2 simply put a number sign in front of it and create table and then run the execute the command parsing is okay execute it's done completely su completed successfully if I now do select star from again select star from customer 2 but make sure to put that number sign number customer 2 I should bring in what an empty table because there's nothing in there exactly just like we had in the beginning with uh, the actual cross customer table so if we were to insert data into it just like we inserted data in the customer table we would uh, uh, we'd uh, see exact similar exactly similar result again it's only good for this session if we create another new query right here just like a blank query and if we say select star from number customer 2 that number table or that temp table does not exist in this secondary query secondary session so it, it cannot identify it cannot see it so we'll close this session just to show you that you know it, it will only work in this session in this window or if it's you're running a report a crystal report or whatever it will only work in that one time run and it's here now we're going to insert data into that table we're just gonna say you know number customer 2 successful we're gonna run select star from customer 2 the data is here so it behaves very similarly it's even faster temp tables are used for shorter data shorter sets of data maybe like 100,000 rows or something you know ask your local database administrators or DBAs for more precise and safer numbers to work with in your queries and now let's see how the drop function works drop command works with uh, you know, temp table it's exactly the same way just put that you know, word drop table in front of that temp table and it should be gone execute completed select star from you know and it's not there anymore now we're going to comment this code out and we're going to go on to the next type of um, table which is uh, creating table variables it starts off with a declare um, syntax uh, and followed by add sign and then the name of the 
name of the table, which we'll call it customer3, followed by the word table, and then we have our open and close parenthesis. We're then simply going to copy and paste the column definitions from our previous tables. If you look at the definition or the syntax of the actual table, you see create, and then the word table, and then the name of the actual table. As opposed to uh, table variable, we have declare, name of the table, and the word table. So we'll parse this, parse it, parsing is okay, then execute it, execution is okay. We'll select everything, select star from this uh, table variable, and let's see the result. It doesn't work. It says must declare the table variable. That means it's not declared, but we just executed it. So it's very strange that you know, it's not working. And we hit execute again, and it says that you know the command is successfully completed. So that's even more strange. We're going to go back to our create table for our, um, our temp table. We're going to hit execute. It says that name already exists. So we cannot execute it twice. We're going to drop the table. So it's gone, and we're going to revert back and leave it the way it was. We're back to our declare statement, but here we executed several times, and every time it says, you know, it's successful. Now, let's select it. It's not working. We select the whole thing. Let's select the upper portion, the actual declare function, and the select statement together, and then execute. Let's see what happens now. Magic. Again. Which means this table variable is active or alive only for that single run, that single one time, one time pass. If I you now execute the select statement, it does it's not it doesn't work. So I hope you see the difference. I'm gonna run the command again, um, the query again, show you again. So we're selecting the select statement and the declare syntax, declare function, we hit execute, we see the blank table. I'm going to uh, bring in the insert statement and try to insert values into this uh, table variable. Again, if I just want to insert it by itself into the table as an independent query, it's not going to work because it doesn't recognize that that uh, table variable. So we have to select the table variable definition and execute it. Then it says on row is affected. But what? If I do select star from that table, it's not going to bring anything. So I'm going to have to uh, select everything, highlight everything, and execute all together. Then I see that row. Now I should be very confident regarding how table variables work. The next uh, topic that we're going to cover is uh, creating variables by itself. Variables are placeholders, you can call them, or parameters. Uh, it starts off with uh, declare syntax declare function and then um, add sign name of the variable and the type of it and you know length of it stuff like that we can declare it we can execute it that command by itself independently you know works just like table variables regular variables also are good for single pass let's go back to our original table select star from customer we're gonna see all the uh, result for rows. I'm gonna paste that, copy paste that uh, uh, query at the bottom of the declare function. Every time there's a declare, uh, that's another thing to remember. Once you declare a function, uh, declare it variable, you should set it. They are, you know, they go hand to hand. So um, in our original query, we had select star from customer, uh, where state equals California. So we're going to replace it. We're going to set this variable to New York or California or something um, and, and then use that in the where clause. I declare and, and execute by itself, you know, it works. The variables, you know, they parse and they work, although they're not being used. So whereas we have state equals California, we're going to have um, state equals that uh, name of that variable. We could have left it as at city, but just for uh, convenience, we'll change the name from state to state over here too. And if we run this query, it doesn't work. So now we have to include that, the whole declare function, so, and the select statement. Now it works.
so now you see uh, if we change it to California it should show, show us those two rows and that's how single pass table variables work in uh, SQL we're going to create view in the next video